Welcome to Color Me Green, a podcast focused on making the world a greener place. Today's episode is very specific. I've, over the years, heard a lot about this specific company, and I'm here today to really get into it. If you do any online shopping, you have probably heard of the company called Shein. Shein is a fast fashion brand that is by far one of my least favorite companies. When people tell me they shop there, I honestly cringe. I also haven't shopped fast fashion in so long that buying anything new has become a thing of the past for me. Companies like Shein that are very inexpensive, and I don't even want to say inexpensive because they're just cheap. Companies like Shein that are cheap and very cheap and as mass produced as they are, I mean, you can't shop there and honestly think that there's nothing wrong with it. Everything I do these days or buy, I have my little conscience with me telling me whether something is right or wrong. I'm not saying that buying fast fashion is wrong, but like, why do something that's harmful to people and the environment if you don't have to? I know I have previously discussed fast fashion in another episode back in the beginning of the show, but today's focus is Shein in particular. Today we are going to look into not only the ecological impact of their company, but also the ethical impact on their workers. With that being said, let's get into today's episode. In a report by money.co.uk, Shein has surpassed industry giants like Nike and Adidas in terms of being the most searched clothing brand on Google, as well as outperformed Zara and Macy's in online sales. However, numerous reports in the past year have exposed the company's troubling record of human rights violations and an environmentally unsustainable business model. This raises questions about why Shein's popularity continues to surge among consumers. Emerging as a global powerhouse, Shein was established in Nanjing, China in 2008 by Chris Xu, an entrepreneur born in the United States with expertise in search engine optimization. Over time, Shein evolved from a budget-friendly Chinese clothing retailer into a massive global online fashion entity. Its sales skyrocketed from $100 billion in 2020, according to Bloomberg to an astonishing $100 billion in 2022. The key attraction of Shein lies in its affordable clothing, which is shipped to over 150 countries and regions worldwide, primarily targeting women in their teens and 20s. Operating similarly to Amazon, Shein operates as a vast online marketplace that brings together approximately 6,000 clothing factories in China under the Shein brand. They utilize internal management software to promptly gather data on which products are selling well and which are not, effectively promoting popular items. As per an investigation by Rest of World, Shein added between 2,000 and 10,000 unique clothing styles to its app every day from July to December in 2021. Can I just add in really quick how annoying their website is? The amount of stuff on there is just confusing and disgusting. How cheap things are? Wow. Also, when I'm shopping online, not that I do often, but if I do, one thing that stands out to me as being able to tell if the company is somewhat or at all reliable or legit is continuity. If all of the photos look like they were taken by completely different people or different companies, it's a big red flag. Just for fun, I came across a sweater that looked really familiar from the photo, like something you would see on like Pinterest or something. So I reverse image searched the photo on Google and turns out you can get it on Shein, originally, so they say, for $15.99 which was, of course, on sale, like everything else, for $8.47. Such an odd price, by the way. You can also get the same sweater from ASOS 
for originally $35 or on sale for $20.80. Or you can get it at Tiger Mist for originally $55 or on sale for $38.50. Obviously, Shein prices their clothing to sell. I'm not sure how they make money off of it, but we'll get into that. That's an insane difference. All for the same sweater. But that's if it's actually the same sweater. Who knows, honestly. I've heard of companies very similar, if not a literally Shein, using photos of similar products and actually selling products that just look similar, but are actually made much cheaper and therefore are probably going to wear like they're cheaper and they're probably going to make bank off of that $8.47. Anyway, I'm done with my rant. This company just grinds my gears, if you can understand. Shein's clothing items are prominently featured in well-executed advertising campaigns managed by the company's headquarters. They have invested substantial sums in promotional efforts on platforms like Google and Facebook, engaged in advertising agreements, and even ventured into the realm of social media with a reality show co-hosted by Khloe Kardashian. However, the cornerstone of their marketing approach lies in collaborating with influencers who create Shein Hall videos. Shein has established partnerships with numerous micro-celebrities, fashion bloggers, and reality TV personalities who showcase their Shein purchases, or whatever Shein gifted them. Because honestly, that's just how those partnerships usually work. If you've ever been personally victimized by a Shein ad on any social platform, please raise your hand. And my hand is raised. While I can't say I've ever given in, I have definitely been tempted. Now let's take a look at Shein's business model, built around the principles of fast fashion and offering products at extremely low prices. First, we have the fast fashion principle. This includes rapid product turnover and frequent collections. Shein excels in rapidly producing and launching new items. They closely follow trends, monitor fashion events, and quickly replicate popular designs. I read that they achieve this by using an AI system. I also read that they steal emerging designers' designs. I saw it in an article and it just listed all of the designers and their original design and then the replicated item on Shein's website. And like, they don't get credit. That is just insane to me. They also release new collections on a frequent basis, often several times a week. This contrasts with traditional brands that typically have seasonal releases. This rapid turnover allows them to keep their inventory fresh and make sure customers have something new to explore and purchase. Next, there's the factor of low prices. This includes the economies of scale, a DTC direct-to-consumer model, and minimal advertising costs. Shein operates on a massive scale, sourcing materials and producing clothing in bulk. This enables them to benefit from economies of scale, reducing costs and allowing for lower pricing. Shein primarily sells its products directly to consumers through its online platform, eliminating the need for physical stores. This reduces overhead costs associated with maintaining brick-and-mortar locations. While Shein does invest in advertising, a significant portion of its marketing strategy relies on influencers, which are very expensive, and UGC, user-generated content, which can be more cost-effective than traditional advertising methods. Then we have the factor of global supply chain. Shein has established a highly effective global supply chain that spans multiple countries, including China, where the company was originated. This allows them to source materials and manufacture products at a competitive cost. Shein's inventory management is optimized for the fast fashion model. They keep limited stock of each product and restock quickly based on demand reducing the need for warehousing large quantities of unsold items. However, to contradict this, in an article by Time, Shein's CEO, Molly Miao, has stated that each item is produced only in small numbers between 50 to 100 pieces a day before it becomes popular and then is mass-produced. 
With this being said, it's important to note that Shein's fast fashion and low price business model has raised concerns about sustainability, labor practices, and the quality of its products. The rapid turnover of clothing items and the pressure to keep prices low can lead to environmental and ethical issues in the fashion industry. Speaking of, let's take a deeper look into the production practices of Shein. First, let's look at the ethical concerns surrounding their labor practices and working conditions. Shein achieves remarkably low prices by reducing workers' wages and utilizing inexpensive, subpar materials. This strategy played a significant role in their rapid rise to success. You can easily purchase 10 clothing items for less than $50 through Shein. These price points would typically be associated with secondhand garments. I buy 99.9% of my clothes secondhand via thrifting, and Shein prices are nearly identical to what I pay. Fast fashion brands such as Shein aim to create the illusion that clothing possesses minimal value and that producing an article of clothing only costs a little bit of money. But this isn't true. The intrinsic value of a polyester dress remains constant. Regardless of whether a brand charges $5 or $50, the production costs, materials, and effort involved remain consistent. Therefore, when Shein offers a $5 dress, it doesn't signify a lower value than a polyester dress from a high-end brand. Rather, it means someone else is subsidizing your purchase. If you don't pay the full price for an item, it's the individuals within the production chain who bear the cost. The laborers in Asia involved in crafting your dress bear the ultimate burden. Low prices foster the perception that clothing is disposable and meant for short-term use, encouraging consumers to buy more than they actually need. If a top costs the same as a cup of coffee, why not purchase a few tops, maybe in different colors? This inclination is particularly pronounced because shipping can take several weeks motivating consumers to place larger orders to justify the wait. Speaking of shipping, the delivery fee often matches or exceeds the cost of a single garment. As a result, buying only one item doesn't make financial sense. It's worth noting that Shein reportedly offers free returns in certain countries, but if you attempt to return a single item, they may simply allow you to keep it and refund your money. This approach is cost-effective for Shein as returning items would necessitate covering shipping costs, which are often equivalent to the garment's price. As I mentioned previously, when you don't pay the full price for an item, someone else bears the cost. The fashion industry is notorious for its exploitation of workers, subjecting them to perilous and uncomfortable working conditions, all to enable brands to offer customers new clothing frequently at minimal prices. Many of Shein's suppliers are small, informal companies that often lack strict regulation. In a November 2021 report by Public Eye, it was revealed that employees at Shein's supplier facilities worked grueling 75-hour weeks. This investigation encompassed visits to 17 factories, where 10 workers were interviewed across six cities in China. The workers were found to labor in three shifts a day, a four-hour morning shift followed by a hour-and-a-half lunch break, approximately four more hours of work in the afternoon, a dinner break of just over one hour, and an evening shift of three to three and a half hours. This evening shift occurs six days a week, with only one day off per month, amounting to a total of 75 weekly working hours. This clearly violates Chinese labor laws, which stipulate a maximum working week of 40 hours. Xi'an appears to disregard these regulations. The interviewed workers reported not receiving overtime pay, and none of them indicated that they had signed employment contracts. They were also deprived of social security contributions, and many factories failed to adhere to basic safety standards, constituting further breaches of Chinese labor law. Xi'an compensates its workers on a per-item basis, incentivizing them to work extended hours. However, this payment structure also means that if a garment fails quality checks, the workers do not receive payment for it. Additionally, during periods of insufficient work availability, these employees do not earn a salary, rendering their employment insecure and unstable. 
Therefore, they are uncertain about their monthly earnings. The same research also revealed that a white and blue floral dress made from polyester likely pays the seamstress or seamster approximately about 47 US cents. Shein then retails the dress for around $10. Reports have also highlighted cases of factories that operate without proper ventilation, fire safety measures, or adequate restrooms. There have been incidents of factory accidents, including fires and building collapses, in countries where Shein sources its products. These accidents often result from inadequate safety measures and overcrowded workplaces. Next, we have the ecological impacts of Shein. Shein is able to provide incredibly affordable clothing, largely due to their extensive use of synthetic fibers such as polyester and nylon. While you might easily dispose of your fast fashion pieces after a single season, garments made from polyester take anywhere from 20 to 200 years to break down. Discarding polyester items might remove them from your closet, but these clothing pieces are likely to outlast your own lifetime. Additionally, the production of synthetic materials carries significant environmental harm and is a major contributor to the current climate change crisis. The production of 1,000 kilograms of polyester fibers results in CO2 emissions ranging from 7.2 to 9.25 kilograms. Annually, the creation of a year's worth of polyester translates to roughly 700 million tons of CO2 emissions. This is equivalent to the emissions produced by 180 coal-fired power plants. Wow. Sheehan alone leaves about 6.3 million tons of carbon dioxide a year in its trail, a number that falls well below the 45% target to reduce global carbon emissions by 2030, which the UN has said is necessary for fashion companies to implement to help limit global warming. Even when considering alternative materials like cotton, the environmental impact is not significantly better. Cotton has lower CO2 emissions, but its production consumes an extensive amount of water, requiring approximately 9,800 liters for every one kilogram of cotton fibers while transitioning to more sustainable materials may lead to higher prices for clothing items, it's a necessary step. Creating clothing that is less harmful in the long run comes at a cost. We cannot continue to produce these environmentally harmful materials and jeopardize the planet's health simply to enable the frequent purchase of inexpensive garments. Shein serves as a prime example of a fast fashion brand boosting the ability to manufacture a clothing item within a single week, encompassing all stages from design to packaging. To provide a basis for comparison, this process reportedly takes three weeks for fast fashion giants like H&M and Zara. Shein primarily appeals to the Gen Z demographic known for its active presence on social media and acute sensitivity to trends. Shein capitalizes on this by vigilantly tracking and swiftly responding to emerging fashion trends. According to multiple sources, Shein introduces an impressive daily influx of new styles, ranging from 700 to 2,000 editions. They initially produce these styles in small quantities, typically between 500 and 100 pieces, like I mentioned earlier. Those items that gain popularity and sell rapidly undergo mass production on a larger scale. Even considering the smallest batch size of 50 pieces for 700 styles, this equates to a staggering 35,000 pieces of clothing produced daily. For larger batch sizes, the number is even more significant. The continuous introduction of fresh styles each day, coupled with the garment's lower quality, incentivizes consumers to return frequently for new purchases. Shein's clothing is designed to be worn only a few times before being replaced with newer trendy pieces. The company handles over 10,000 orders daily, contributing to the unsettling statistic that the average consumer discards 60% of their new clothing within a year. An investigation conducted by Public Eye unveiled that one of Xi'an's numerous suppliers in China manufactures a mind-boggling 1.2 million clothing articles each day. 
Shein's products originate from a multitude of factories. It's worth pausing to contemplate these numbers and consider the vast quantities of materials brought into existence daily, many of which take centuries to decompose. Now I want to take a second to mention their sustainability report on their website. Or the lack of it. It's really lacking, and unless you download the full report, you aren't going to see much of anything in terms of numbers and stats. And I did just that. For example, their website version says that they are focusing on recycled and sustainable materials. Yet in the download of the report, it shows that about 60% of their items are made using polyester compared to the 1% of recycled polyester. 10% 10% cotton, 1% forest safe viscose, 3% spandex, 3% polyamide, and 13% other, whatever that is. It's important to note that again, while they say they want to move to more sustainable materials, a company that is only in business because they are, I'm not even going to say the word inexpensive anymore, because they're cheap. They can do this because the materials they use are cheap. Moving to more sustainable materials comes with a price tag, and they're going to have to pay that one way or another, either increasing their pricing and going against their entire business model, or paying their workers less than the nothing they already get paid. Another chart you can't review on the site is their emissions. In the downloaded report, you can see in their scope one of direct emissions, their fossil fuel combustion for 2021 to 2022 increased 3,864 percent from 25 tons of CO2 to 991 tons in just one year. Astonishing, I know. But are we surprised? Their downstream transportation, meaning transportation to consumers, increased 56%. Transportation of returned packages decreased 73%, like I mentioned earlier, probably because they just let customers keep their items because it's cheaper than paying for a return label that costs just as much or more than the original purchase price. Moving down the list, their product supply chain increased 56%, from 3.7 million tons of CO2 to 5.5 million tons of CO2 and their packaging material increased 94% from 139,000 tons to 271,000 tons. If you want to take a further look inside Shein's sustainability report, it's free and available for download on their website. With all of this being said, I want to remind everyone that while it's easy to give in to the cheap prices for a cute outfit, that you're literally only going to wear a few times until you find something cuter, it's so much easier and rewarding to buy sustainably or to thrift like myself. I get it. I personally can't afford to buy clothes from sustainable brands. I can't afford to pay $40 for a shirt or even for a pair of jeans. So instead, I go to my local thrift store and literally get the cutest clothes for so much cheaper. They're in great condition and so far have lasted me a long time. And when I'm done with them, I can just take them right back and get new stuff. It's also nice knowing I'm getting new clothes that are cute and new to me while not contributing to the cycle of fast fashion. If you want to learn more about the life cycle of fashion and more information about fast fashion, you can go back and listen to episode three. I want to thank you for listening to today's episode of Color Me Green. New episodes come out on Wednesdays and hopefully each one has something you can take away and learn from. If you want to request a certain topic to discuss, please feel free to message me on the show's Instagram at colormegreenpodcast linked in the show notes. If you love today's episode, please make sure to leave a review and let others know what you think of the show. One of the best ways to help change the world is to share this episode with a friend and let them also learn what they can do to live more sustainably. Always remember to reduce, reuse, recycle, and live green.